everybody, this is, to quote Venom Fang X, the video that you've all been waiting for. Seriously. No, this is the video in which I'm going to re announce the result of my moral experiment. It was really good. Thank you to everybody who participated in this. The results were very, very illuminating. Now, let's look, first of all, at the original um, question. Basically, you were put in a situation where there were three people. A person A, a person B, and a person C that had different amounts of wealth. That was the basic setup. Now, in the experiment, I gave person A $100, person B $50, and person C nothing at all. Now, person A was given the opportunity to donate part of their wealth to person C. But that wasn't all. They could make the choice themselves. There was no obligation. They could donate anything from zero to the full $100, whatever they felt like. But person B was put in a position where they had to judge person A's donation and they were given the opportunity to fine person A at a personal cost. To be precise, if person B decided to fine person A, it would cost them, person B, one dollar for each three dollars that they decided to fine person A with. That money wasn't going anywhere. It wasn't going to person C. It was just lost to the system although I later then clarified to later entrants in the competition that the total, say, buying power of the system wasn't going to change. So, let's first look at this situation in the very harsh light of day. And let's assume that people will just always make selfish decisions and never look at other people. Then this is a complete no-brainer. A should just hang on to all their cash, because it is not in their own interest to give anything to person C. And person B also wisely should not impose any fine on person A, because it would only cost them money, and again it wouldn't benefit anybody. So you would expect that the large majority of people would donate nothing, and then the large majority of person B people would not impose any fines, right? No. You see, the large majority of people who were put in the position of person A decided that they would donate some money. And the most common answer was $50. And they treated this as if this was some sort of a no-brainer. They said, listen, you know, if I give $50, then that makes everybody even. Fair is fair. Similarly, the response from most persons B to that donation was to treat that as a no-brainer. Sure, everything's fair, though. No? Why would I impose any fines? But it gets more interesting than that. First of all, the fact that so many people in the position of person A were inclined to give money, whether it was $50 or you know, anything between $25 and $50, $20 to $50, thereabouts. Why did these people even feel any sort of compunction to give money to person B? They were under no obligation. So why did they? It was a sense of fairness that they felt. They felt a sense of obligation to do this. And of course, the fact that person B was in a position to find them also pulled a couple of people over the brink. Also, I noted that those people who did give $50 didn't feel they had to explain very much. It came naturally to them. It, it seemed obvious to them to donate that money. People who donated very little or who donated nothing at all, those were by and large the people who felt they had to justify their decision with um, a lot of reasoning behind it. 
But there's more. There's more. There was so much interesting information coming out of this experiment. Let's look at the role that person B played in this experiment. Now, the people that were put in the role of person A very often felt that they had to think about what person B might do. And they worried a little bit about how and what person B might find them. They also considered the possibility that person B might find them out of nothing more than a sheer sense of malice, purely to put a spanner in the works, so to, so to speak. And a lot of person A's decisions were based on, you know, realizing that there was this observer, this person B, who was there to see and judge what they did. Funnily though, not a single person B, not one, made a malicious decision. Nobody in the position of person B find anybody who gave a substantial donation. There's one exception to this in a case where person A donated $40, which by most person B's was considered more than fair, but this person A or this person B was so strictly concerned with evening the odds that they still decided to find person A. But even then, that was not an act of malice. This was not a person B coldly calculating how they could maximize their own um, stash by cleverly finding person A. Is thus, and thus ensuring that person B would end up on top. Nobody in the position of person B ever made that purely selfish, cold calculation. Now what can I conclude from this? Now obviously there is no such thing, as we already know, there is no such thing as an absolute morality here. There is no clear-cut absolutely right thing to do in this situation. As I pointed out to a number of people who participated, there are no right or wrong answers here. But still, there is something underlying the whole decision-making process here that points at an innate moral sense. Everybody who participated was arguing from a sense of what was fair. Even people in the position of person B who decided not to find person A for a unfair decision did, if you read between the lines, clearly indicate that they did judge what person A did as unfair. Just that they didn't feel that they were the right people or that they could do anything about it or that it was right for them to do anything about it. But that didn't stop them from looking at person A and thinking what you just did there wasn't right. So we have an innate moral sense that gives us the ability to have a sense of fairness of what we see happening around us. And what is very interesting is that, okay, our cultural background, our cultural background makes some sort of a difference. It fills in the parameters. It tells us how to implement that moral sense. But what is very important is the realization that that moral sense is there. It is something that's not accessible to us. We cannot rationally explain where that sense of fairness comes from. Not to ourselves. Scientifically, of course, we can work it out. We can see how it, the mechanism behind it functions. Yes, sure. But it doesn't change the fact that to us personally, as we make moral decisions, the real reason for moral decisions isn't clear to ourselves. We are creatures who do not understand our own moral sense. On top of that, we put cultural biases, parameters, that steer our moral sense in one direction or another, and that can quite easily have a rationale behind them, a sense of reasoning behind them. 
we can even look at our innate morality, innate moral sense, and override things that we feel, that we, by reasoning, judge to be incorrect or not clear enough or whatnot. That is the reason why we invent laws. That is the reason why when we participate in societies, we have to adhere sometimes to rules that make no sense to us or that don't feel right. But we all have an innate capacity to acquire morality. And that we all do was pretty clear from the outcome of this experiment. I have posted a link to the results in the sidebar. Have a look, you can see what all the people A and B decided. I've removed all the names. Let me know if you see one that, I'm, that I didn't spot. But I removed all the names and I've tried to remove all personal information. Have a look at it, it's very illuminating. Thank you once again to everybody who participated. This was a great success. Thank you.